the unique feature of the fast bail is the fact that she's a non-stop bailer. Uh, Designed in Ireland, I believe. Uh, Designed or... and developed by uh, an Irish man, yes. Uh, come, comes from a, a contractor background and had a, a grow for bailing and been exposed to every breed and make of bailers over the years. Ideal conditions, you can get up to 80, 90 bales per, per hour on a, on a machine like that. So you can get home earlier in the evening. Exactly. And that's what get the other jobs looking, done. Exactly. That's what people are looking for, you know. Talking about the, the eye plow. The eye plow. What is what is that? Well, what's eye plow going to do for us? Supposedly to make life easier. Anyway, that's. Is that all electro hydraulics, or is that coming through a memory or a computer? Where it's coming from the computer itself, but it has an oil flow from the factory permanently, and uh, also then uh, it's connected with GPS. So with this plow, uh, to run in a straight line in the field, if you have a curves and that, after a few runs, it should have the whole field running straight. That'll be a good one for me, John. Good for the yeah. championship. Plan. Good for the championship. <laughs> this is the flail bot, Bomford flail bot. Yeah. It's a remote controlled uh, flail mower. Um, it's used for um, cutting grass on steep banks, yeah. or for cutting grass in general. Um, the idea, I suppose, the, the the natural replacement is for the guy with the weed eater. Yeah. So uh, I can be sitting in the car. So you can be sitting in the car, nice warm car, listening to uh, the tunes uh, while uh, you run the the the, the mower. But the idea is, I suppose, safety. I suppose uh, is sa it? safety is yeah. key, especially when you're going into councils. Yeah. When you're going into councils or um, working on steep banks where your traditional tractor and hedge cutter wouldn't get access to. Also, if you're going in around forestry where you have very low uh, line trees and you want to get in and, and, and clear the ground, it's very compact and um, yeah, quite a compact machine. Now we were here with this uh, machine, um, Christoph. It looks, it's a three meters wide, is it or four meters? Is it the four meter? Yeah. Just the four meter four version. Meter, yeah. um, exactly. Uh, what, what is it uh, specialised for? What what kind of a farmer situation? Obviously for seeding, but what type of a farmer would uh, would be you know what type of crops would be grown with it? Um, we can we want to focus on working uh, quality, so we want uh, to focus uh, on very shallow uh, working as well as the deep uh, working. Yeah. So at the first time, it's very important to go uh, through the stubbles very shallow so that all the weed can grow again very uh, quick. Oh, you so germinate the weeds with the first exactly, one, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so we can go uh, four or five centimeters and it make it even so every crop can grow um, very well after the harvesting. What's the maximum work in depth you can work at? Uh, you can work up to 15, 18 centimeters, no problem. So the maximum problem would be the tractor in front. The problem is the tractor. <laughs> so how many horsepower are you recommending? Depending on pretty much depth. on the soil, depth yeah. and... Uh, the incline, slope. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So these wear parts, um, we have tested them and they take uh, 11 times higher wear uh, as the normal... And is it hard parts. steel, is it a hard ox or is it faced or what is yeah. it? Yeah, it so different tight? times. Yeah. So it's of course bigger, yeah. more material and there are hardened pieces uh, on top, on, on the side. Is, is the next few years going to be the era of precision or smart farming? I think from grass, yeah. Grass is really starting to come into its yeah. own now. So people are starting to look at precision farming to save money in fertilizer, be, be a bit more efficient, be, uh, be more productive in grass. So the area of growth for me is in grass and production. Um, and the driver's costs. Yeah. because extra production isn't really cutting it at the minute. It's, it's, let's try and save costs, let's try and improve yeah. our gross margin through reduction of costs. Uh, we use a company called uh, Novatel to deliver the GPS to us. Now, they work off uh, both American satellites, European satellites and Russian yeah, satellites. And more coverage. And with a lot more coverage. But they do a lot of smart stuff within their receivers, within their uh, GPS, that uh, actually models, models what the tractor's doing on the ground. So if we do have fallouts, black spots, things like that, the GPS keeps going. And from the farmer's point of view, from our system's point of view, they don't even know. Mm -hmm. You know, so th there's a lot of a, a lot of advances in that that has came to the fore uh, more recently. So it's a lot more reliable. So you're talking about a free signal, John. In this case, yeah, it's yeah. satellite signal. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of yeah? And what sort of accuracy are you? Thirty centimeters. Say, 30 centimeters. Okay. You know, thirty centimeter over a fifteen minute time frame. So right. that's acceptable that, for that, fertilizer application. Yeah, I think so. I think with a broadcast spreader. Um, yeah. 
that's not a problem. Yeah. I mean, with a broadcast spreader, I think if you could 30 centimetre, fine. I, yeah. Because, okay, your rate might change technically a small bit, but it's not like a, a, a cultivator or something where yeah. you have a missed gap. You don't. Yeah. Broadcast spread, fertilizer sort of spreads over. So that sort of uh, accuracy is fine. Yeah. 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 Say if you were a farmer and you were using it for nothing other than to put it up and look for wild oats in the, yes. in the crop, yeah. or you were looking for bad parts where it was overlapped. Mm. How easy is it to actually work your own drone? It's very easy. They're all kind of GPS driven. So basically if you just take them off, it'll fly out, take your hands off the controls and sit there. So you yeah. can just go forward, back, left and right. There's no real part of this such. Yeah, so and it has a follow me home function, does it? It is, yeah. If it, if it goes out of range, it'll come back to where it started. Or if the battery goes out, it knows that and it'll come back. And, and it'll come back to its base. Land again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, you're, if yeah. you're using the mapping software, you're, you're pretty much setting up before you take off. And then you're just letting it go and just keeping an eye on it. Keeping an eye on it. It'll come back and land. Yeah. And process it out. And process it out. And so there's no skill in it if it's if the no, maps it's, it's to the programming is. It is. It's it's setting up to to get what you need like yeah. from the results really. We're here, we're working on wearables, wearable technology for the dairy farmer. Yeah. Like your Fitbits, we actually have the Moon Monitor Plus. It's the award-winning health and fertility monitoring collar. It's a collar worn around the cow's neck. Yeah. And it, but through use of acceler accelerometers and smart computing, it's processing algorithms, giving the farmer information on its feeding, resting, rumination time per animal. Also cows that are in heat, so you get your optimum timing for AI. Yeah. And which of them factors is, uh, would you say, is more critical or are they all critical for a dairy farmer? Or what do you think the, uh, the feedback is? Which, which bit of that service is getting the best feedback from farmers? I suppose initially, um, firstly, I suppose they're all critical yeah. for the progressive dairy farmer. Initially, heat detection was the main one, but it's actually gone on more than that now. We're actually focusing on rumination. Of, if your cow's not ruminating, not chewing her cut, she's not performing. So as, as health indicators, now you're talking about really? Exactly, yeah. 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 The cow drops off in rumination early detection of that illness you can come in and you're not going to actually prevent the cow getting sick but you can actually zone in on what's wrong with her mm -hmm. say um, a quick drop of rumination could be ketosis something like that mm -hmm. slow drop of rumination could be pneumonia cases mm -hmm. her vets can work with it can actually see when the cow last ruminated when she last fed and you can actually diagnose it problems and prevent them rapidly. All the information is downloaded. You can see our activity levels here. All of a sudden, the increase in activity today. Sure. Can we just see that again there now yep. for a second? So your 65-day window, all of a sudden, the increase in activity mm. today. So we go down here, we zone in the last four hours, or four days, sorry, of our um, activity. You can see exactly when the onset of heat started and hour by hour the increase in activity, which gives you your optimum timing for AI. It's, it's all about honing in on them. Yeah. Timing in farming is crucial. Yeah. We know it's, it's like the machinery and, and tillage farmers, the weather, AI, and that's, that's how you get your optimum conception rate.